I'm Glenn McGinnis, and this is Outburst. On the program, should voting in elections be mandatory? No. <laughs> I think people should be given that choice. Uh, I think people should be free to decide whether or not they want to vote. If we like the way that we live, we should show it. No, it's your own right. If you want to vote, vote. If you don't, that's okay too. But first, flooding, massive forest fires, tornadoes, and now that fall is here, hurricane season seems to be an annual event here in Canada. The spring and summer of 2023 has proven to be a challenge for first responders across the country as people have been forced to leave their communities as their homes burn to the ground, with much of the blame being directed at the effects of climate change. But there is also part of the population that feels these disasters are just part of nature's cycle of renewing itself, which has been going on for thousands, if not millions of years. So we took this question to Canadians. Have the extreme weather events in Canada made you more concerned about climate change? Uh, no, not. I don't think. I think every year we have uh, lots of forest fires, floods, this and that. It happens all the time. So I don't think it's showing a rapid change in, in the climate. Oh, absolutely. Like they even just recorded like this is the smokiest year on record for Saskatoon. Like and this is going to be the new normal is just constant haze. <laughs> Extremely concerned. I've never seen a summer like this um, and I hope I don't have to continue seeing summers like this and especially winters are getting uh, worse. They're getting colder. There's more snow, especially hurricane season down in the States. They're already experiencing category threes, category fours, and it's the beginning of the season. Um, so I think climate change needs to happen now because this is when we have an opportunity to do something, not 20 years down the road. So I hope that's a change that our government is working towards, um, that our people see that this isn't okay. I think it's a cycle, cycler, like you, my dad was born in the 30s, I heard about the winters in the 50s, and they were way worse than what we kind of experience. So, I think they come and go. I, Mother Nature kind of takes care of Mother Nature, right? Yes and no. Um, I, I'm, I am neutral against that one. I don't know. I mean, if you look back in history, um, where I'm from, we were once a desert. So, you know, what comes around goes around, basically. Not really. I think like the history of climate change has existed on the planet. We've gone through highs and lows. I think it just shows that we need to be really mindful of climate change and be adaptable. And we as a society need to like lean on technologies and like science to adapt to this instead of just like, you know, hitting the same nail with the same tool. Yeah, I could say on my part, climate change has impacted my enjoyment of the land because there's areas that I accessed generational with my family that, you know, washouts, water, fires has impacted my, my way to um, practice my culture with my kids and my family and myself. Uh, yes, absolutely, absolutely, especially we were just vacationing in Kelowna just before the fires and we always thought, oh, that's a nice place to live. Then after everything's happened, and we saw on the news uh, the devastation, especially west side in Kelowna. We would be never moving there right now. And um, just with the fires, flooding, um, heat, uh, extreme heat, yes, there, there is a problem with climate, climate change and it's very concerning, absolutely. I think it's, they're only gonna get worse and more frequent and I don't think we're very ready. And if we're not acknowledging that it's gonna get worse, it's not gonna get any better. Um, but I, I mean, I'm very concerned. Um, even, you know, being in Canada, me and my family, we didn't know if we would be able to come and stuff because of the fires. 100%. Why? Because <laughs> Canada's on fire, um, quite literally, and there are now tornadoes in Ottawa on a regular basis. So, yeah, it's uh, weather's getting more and more extreme. Uh, yes, because like there's always wildfires going on and this affects everyone. So yeah, I mean it's become much more immediate and it's like an immediate danger right now. So yes, I am very affected by it. Oh yes, absolutely. Um, it's just, uh, you know, from my experience, like the summers are getting way, way hotter. And you know, it's just, um, it just doesn't feel good. It doesn't feel right. Um, it's, it's affecting a lot of the things around my home in terms of power outages and that sort of thing and so I've had to resort to backup procedures like generators and all sorts of stuff to deal with this sort of stuff. No, I think that's just nature running its course actually. I think it's a part of a hundred year plan 
And I think that 100 years is up right now where all the old sticks are burning. And I think it's something we need to live through. I think we're getting a little too excited about the whole thing. Yes, we need to protect our citizens, right? We need to protect our people. But I, I think this just needs to burn and regrow for nice green trees that don't burn so easy. I'm a geologist. The planet is not going to die. The biological systems may be changed, but the planet doesn't care. Um, and so, yeah, who do we have to worry about? Us. And we're having a profound change on our own outcome. When a natural disaster occurs, people or even entire families have little to no time to get themselves to safety, often taking their most prized possessions with them. But that said, the vast majority of Canadians have no contingency plan in place if one occurs. So we took to the streets to ask people what, if any, strategies they have in place if the unthinkable were to happen. Our question. How prepared are you for an extreme weather event? Uh, to be honest, not really. I'm not really prepared for that because I didn't see it happening so fast. But I think in the future I will be looking at things that will help me, my family and my friends. I think that's a tough question to answer because how prepared can you be for an extreme weather event, right? Especially with the, what is it, is it a hurricane right now in Florida? Or a tsunami? Like them, they weren't prepared and they got like evacuated. So I don't know how prepared we can be, especially living like on the coast. It is a bit scary. Um, or you look at people in the lower mainland with the fires, and I like yeah. I think I think it's I, that's why it's an extreme weather event. It's impossible to prepare for. It's it's yeah. I think that that's part of what makes it so devastating. Yeah, I think just listen to like the officials. Like if you need yeah. to evacuate, <laughs> evacuate. Sure. Don't yeah. stay there and watch the fire. Like <laughs> yeah. I don't understand that. No, I'm not. I don't know of too many people that really are prepared in my area, anyways, for an extreme weather event. Um, so no, I'm guilty of that for sure. I have, I have lots of food in my fridge, lots of food in my freezer, lots of water. Um, we have a, uh, a motorhome we can jump in maybe, uh, but definitely not, I'm definitely not prepared how I should be and it makes me think to, to get more prepared and get our affairs in order. In the event, we have to do a quick e exit. More concerned about earthquake now here on the island, more so than fire. Um, we are not living near a forest where we live, but definitely earthquake is a concern. I'm as prepared as I can be. What does that look like? That, you know, uh, what does that look like? That's a good question. What, what does being prepared look like? We do a lot of outdoor stuff here. We take care of ourselves. Uh, we do survival stuff. So I think I'm always kind of prepared for that and, 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 and adaptable. I, I've lived in Africa, I live in Europe, live in Canada, so like, you know, you, you adapt to whatever is thrown at you. Honestly not prepared enough. Um, I rent currently, so I'm less concerned about my property as if when I was a homeowner, but if there was uh, a big issue in Ottawa, I, I, I'm not. I don't have a survival package at home, so I will go do that now. <laughs> Uh, to be honest, not very. I mean, like, we've seen it going around, but, like, we haven't really done anything uh, to prepare ourselves. Uh, I just, I hope I'm never in that kind of situation where the government tells me, hey, we have to evacuate everyone. So I haven't, like, done anything so far, but I am concerned. Uh, not any more than the average person. I mean, I live just up the block here downtown, so typically it's not much of an effect for me. I think it's a lot worse in the suburbs, but... I don't know, I got a couple of candles if the power goes out, but that's pretty much it. <sighs> Not really prepared, <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> no, no. What do you think, you, more, what more do you think you could do? Uh, be more eco-friendly. <laughs> that, that's, that's what do you mean for thing? a flooding or a tornado or anything? You don't have any kind of game plan? Why, why wouldn't you? The, the game plan is to uh, <laughs> hunker down and try to find a good spot. And, and that's. Basically, the, I don't know really what to answer on that one. You're just going to wing it? Yeah, that's it, wing it. <laughs> At this point, very prepared. I've, I've taken all the necessary means that I know of anyway in terms of things like a gener generator transfer switch, generators, everything's covered. And, I've for, you know, unfortunately, I've actually been able to test these things out and they work great. <laughs> because of the weather? Because of the weather, yes. Well, I don't have a generator which would be useful. I don't have a, you know, a, a, 
a safety pack or you know things packed and ready to go if, if needed um, you know the you know the, the potential of having a wildfire in Ottawa is remote compared to BC um, flooding um, there's a lot of topography here if it ever flooded here the entire province would be underwater um, um, so well not quite but um, you know, should we be? We should. Uh, maybe it's not quite as essential here as it is in many other places of the country. I don't know. Relatively prepared? I'm not sure. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I don't know. We haven't done that much to prepare for an extreme weather event. Pretty prepared. I'm a farm kid. I grew up. Um, I could probably survive two weeks in my house <laughs> because I'm always stocked up with groceries. Um, I work out sort outdoors so like, I always got warm clothes I know how to stay warm so yeah they don't really affect me other than the day of not at all I have my boat so if it floods I can get in the boat and that's about it uh, it you know we're prepared we do uh, you know have some emergency things set aside and for power outages and that and water shortages so we do have ourselves set up for that I am not prepared whatsoever I just live day-to-day -day basis. Uh, I try not to worry about the future too much. Um, I'm very prepared. I'm an amateur storm chaser, so I take as best care of myself and as of my people and my family as I can and making sure everyone's aware. Um, I think I'm very prepared, but I'm, I'm not sure about those around me, so that's why I use my social media platforms to help others. What is the official bird of Prince Edward Island? Blue Jay. Osprey or Sandpiper? Sandpiper. Sandpiper. I think it's the Osprey. Oh, let's say Osprey, yeah, I don't know. Osprey. Sandpiper. Osprey. Sandpiper. Blue Jay. Sandpiper? Uh, let's try Sandpiper. Blue Jay? Sandpiper, I think. No, I don't know. The answer? Yeah. Blue Jay. Blue Jay. Yeah. Good job, man. <laughs> The official bird of Prince Edward Island is the Blue Jay. It received its official title back in 1977 after a province-wide vote was held to pick the provincial bird in 1976. The Blue Jay can mainly be found throughout Eastern Canada and the US and is also common in Prince Edward Island year-round. In Canada, if you're looking to read a news article on Facebook or Instagram, then good luck. Meta has blocked all access to news articles in Canada because of the federal government's Bill C-18, which forces tech companies to pay publishers or broadcasters to post or share their content on the platforms. The bill was originally intended to bring some much needed revenue to newsrooms across the country, which have been in decline for some time now. But this has resulted in many Canadians having to look elsewhere when they want to keep up to date on current events. So, what do you think about this? Our question. What do you think of tech giants banning news from their platforms? Personally, I don't agree with it, actually. The C-18 bill, I believe it's called, and uh, yeah, I wish it wasn't a thing, honestly. Not a fan of it, yeah. Did you find you got most of your news? All of it. All of my news came from social media, yeah. I feel like anyone under the age of like 40, personally, is kind of now doesn't have access to news. So we're kind of blind on the whole subject now. I think it's good. I think the question of news as being something that is owned by the public, I think it just reinforces the need for people at large to be involved in news creating and news con consuming. I think the village square needs to come back where people were spending, spending time discussing issues. You see that in restaurants, um, but need more of a public square. Yeah, that's a tough one. Yeah, that's a tough one for me. I don't, I don't know. I, I mean, they're they're such a large business that uh, that they have an oversized influence on that type of a deal. But uh, it's too. I think they have too much power. They're an olig oligopoly. I think. And uh, yeah, I. So I don't, I don't know how to. I wouldn't know how to deal with that. Uh, I mean, it can only have a negative effect. To be honest, I'm not too clued up on the topic. Uh, but. Uh, I don't have uh, Facebook and I don't really use Instagram for news, uh, but I've seen a lot of my friends complaining about it. Like, I think it can only have a negative effect. You know, news should be available for everyone on any platform. Yeah. 
although you can access all these news sites just on their own. You have no need to access them through social media. It's very easy. It's a simple Google search. I don't think it actually puts a serious barrier on news, only, only if you decide to get your news through social media, which is very easy not to do. On the one hand, I welcome it because Facebook doesn't have a very good reputation when it comes to actually, you know, uh, they're very one-sided. They're responsible for the, the whole thing that happened in Rohingya at the time, right? So bad news and uh, false news spreads like wildfire on Facebook. So on the one hand, I welcome it. But on the other hand, I'm sort of like, I'm so used to getting my news from social media. Uh, it's sort of like I'm going through withdrawal right now, so yeah, that's the only thing that, I'm, that I have a problem with right now. But I do welcome that. I watch the news regularly. I read the paper daily, uh, the newspaper daily in our town. So um, yeah, no, I stay abreast of the news uh, without social media, to be honest. That's not where I get my news. You do it the tr traditional way? I do, absolutely. I'm a scientist myself and I use uh, social media a lot and I think uh, that's a faster and a much more reliable uh, source of uh, news uh, than what the uh, uh, news mainstream media is putting out there. Uh, but I don't think uh, it's a right move, but what they could do instead is sort of probably regulate um, the news that's come that comes out in their platform and kind of the channels that put forward those news but uh, I don't think it's censorship is the right thing to do. You know when it comes to the tech giants and uh, the banning of news it's their decision. You know what we, we don't own them as, as governments they're private companies and they make the decisions ultimately it's their choice. And, and how will you source your Canadian news without that platform? I will go to the local news outlets in Canada to get my news, my municipalities. I will log on to local events, local places to get my news. I don't need a tech giant. I'm not a big multi, uh, like a Facebook or a Meta uh, person. I don't follow my news from there. So I'm comfortable with the way news is today. I think that it's insane. Um, I think that news should be available to everybody and I think that we need to be uh, making sure that credits are being credited to the journalists that are writing these, this, these news pieces. Um, well, I think banning any sort of news from these tech giants, I think that will allow for news to be um, shown to people in a, in a less biased way because we have seen, especially throughout the pandemic, how biased lots of news sources can be, especially in social media uh, due to the advent of fact checkers especially. So I think if news should be uh, read or viewed or uh, consumed in any way, it should be directly through the uh, news channels or news companies, not through any social media company, because uh, there is a good amount of bias that can go uh, through it. Honestly, I think it's terrible because I think that everybody should have a right to view the content that they want to view. Um, I think it gets into a really messy territory when the government's controlling what people can and cannot see. I don't think that's the right move. Uh, I think everyone's allowed to, to everyone's allowed to, to read the news and to inform themselves and uh, to look for themselves what source of news they, they want to follow and that kind of thing. So I don't think that banning uh, news from social media, even though I'm not a big fan of social media, I feel like it has its place right now. And uh, news is a big part of it. Most, a lot of people that I actually know, like they do follow the news on social media. And like, very few people I know actually nowadays go to a news website to search for what they want to read. Like everything is just tossed into them. But I don't agree that they should ban any sort of news, however controversial they might be, or something like that. I think it's interesting in the fact that it will probably limit misinformation being spread. Um, however, at the same time, it's limiting in general. Um, so, yeah, that's kind of, I think it's a hard balance to find. So, if I understand correctly, it's not necessarily that they had to ban news, it's that they didn't want to pay any extra money, if I understand. So, in that case, I, I can't really say that I blame them. As someone who's worked in Canadian media, I can't see the government 
like being the bad guy here for wanting them to have to contribute to this. Uh, I, I completely blame the tech giants on this one. This is a choice they're choosing to make and I think is kind of hampering Canadian news because of the choices they're choosing to engage in. Like this is not forced upon them. Low voter turnout for elections in all levels of government has been a concern for quite some time now. The highest voter turnout for a federal election in Canada took place 65 years ago in 1958, when 79.4% of Canadians showed up to vote. The lowest voter turnout for a federal election took place 50 years later in 2008, when 58.8% of Canadians showed up at the polls. With scarcely more than half of eligible voters showing up at the ballot box, would compulsory voting be a viable option in this country? Roughly 21 nations around the world practice this, most notably Australia, where if you don't vote, you'll be fine. But other countries don't enforce this. So what are your thoughts? Our question. Should voting in elections be mandatory? No, it's your own right. If you want to vote, vote. If you don't, that's okay too. Well, I guess nobody should have to do anything they don't want to do, but I think it's better to go. It would certainly help get the public out if it was mandatory. However, it is taking away people's freedom. No, <laughs> I think people should be given that choice. Um, there are people who choose to be apolitical, but I think uh, being apolitical in a time of crisis is indirectly uh, supporting the crisis. So I think uh, people should come forward and be take, take a stance in that cases, but I think people should be given the chance. Um, to like choose to cast their vote or not. But I think there are ways in which we can um, improve the number of voters that come forward uh, every election by increasing awareness and such. Um, but I think people should be given that choice. Yes. Why? Why? Because democracy should be respected by all. And you know what? We, we're a great country and we should all be stepping up and putting our vote forward. You know, it's, we all have a choice. Get educated, do your part, and have a vote. Yes, no further comment. No, absolutely not. Uh, I think people should be free to decide whether or not they want to vote. Uh, many times, I mean, as a Canadian citizen, you may have come across many, many elections wherein the candidates are absolutely horrible. And, uh, you know, I don't think every single citizen uh, should be mandated, should be made to vote because they may very well think that the politicians uh, who are, you know, the leaders in a particular constituency or for any federal election or provincial, whatever, I don't think they should be mandated. Uh, they, I don't think they should be forced to vote for them because, you know, right now, you may, I know many people, Canadian citizens, who think the uh, current federal leaders from every single party is horrible. So if we uh, made voting mandatory, you'd essentially be forcing people to make decisions that they absolutely hate, and I don't think that's good. I don't know. I mean, I would like to say yes, but I think that if it was mandatory, then a lot of people that are not educated on the election would end up voting, and uh, I don't know, that could get messy. So, no. <laughs> I think there should, should be freedom again to be allowed to vote if you don't want, or not vote if you don't want to. I absolutely think yes. I think it should be mandatory. Uh, I'm not Canadian, I'm a permanent resident, so I'm not a citizen. Uh, I can't vote and it kind of saddens me because I've been living here for 10 years and uh, I don't have the right to vote and I feel like I contribute enough. I pay my taxes, I work, I do everything by the book and yet still I can't vote and I would love to. Like I can only vote if I, whenever I get the citizenship, before that, you're not allowed to vote. So unfortunately, I can't participate in any elections. I think it's always important to use your opinion when you can have it. And, but I also don't think it's something that you can force upon people. I think it should always be encouraged. And that goes back to education as well and making sure that people are educated in schools on their options in voting and where they can vote and how they can vote and things like that. Um, but it's not something you can force. It's a part of Canada being something that you can do as your free will and things like that. Um, so I think it just goes back to education and people knowing their options and how they can educate themselves on who they're voting for and when they can vote and where they can vote. I, 
I like the idea behind it. I don't trust it not to be weaponized in some way that's not going to like affect minorities or people who are disenfranchised. I, I like the idea of it. I don't trust it to be implemented properly. <laughs> that's, that's really my answer, which is not helpful. <laughs> well, it's a right, it's a privilege. Um, we cannot impose this right uh, onto the people, but every single citizen must be aware of its uh, right that was uh, so fought after and earned by our forebears. I think voting in elections is valuable if you have an informed electorate. So that's one. I think elections should be tied to a, uh, voter accountability. So once you elect, you, you're not off the hook. So if you do elect, I think you, you elect, but you sign up to provide feedback and accountability to politicians. So don't go to sleep at election, uh, you know, elect and then go to sleep, but elect and step up. Yes. Yes. Because I think everyone should give their voice and share their opinion. Mm -hmm. How, yeah. I don't think you should be able to complain about the political situation if you don't vote. In Canada, you get the right to vote, so why wouldn't you? I also don't really know much. I, I have no really opinion, I, I think, but I would say yes, because I do think it's important that people express, um, I guess, what they want. And I mean, it's important that everyone does vote because it does make a big difference in the end. So yes, I guess. If you're not interested enough to vote, and if you're not interested enough to find out what's happening in our current politics, then you shouldn't vote. Thanks for watching this episode of Outburst on CPAC. If you have any comments about this show or any other show, you can find us on social media. You can also find us on our website at www.cpac.ca. I'm Glenn McGinnis, and on behalf of my colleagues at the Cable Public Affairs Channel, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.